This is how a Ryzen 7000 CPU by AMD reacts to the old star cooler going by the name of Wraith Prism. Is this even safe? Is the CPU going to overheat or will we possibly end up with lower CPU performance at the end of the day? If it's the latter, how big of a loss is there going to be? Additionally, I've gone through the extra work of optimizing the CPU even when combined with that stock cooler. I've done that by making use of the PBO2 curve optimizer as well as adjusting power and temperature limits. In the end, we're seeing some pretty interesting results there. For this neat little experiment, I've once again gone with the speedy Ryzen 9 7950X sporting 16 cores and 32 threads. It's socketed on the ASRock X670E Taichi Carrara motherboard, paired with my usual Kingston Fury Beast RGB, DDR5 RAM and RTX 3090 graphics card. For those of you that don't know, such a so-called Wraith Prism CPU cooler was supplied with certain CPUs back in 2018 and 2019, if I'm not entirely mistaken. For years, it's more or less considered legendary, especially due to its unusually good looks, given the fact it's a stock cooler. Of course, it cannot even keep up with rather cheap tower air coolers in terms of sheer cooling performance, which is why today's experiment surely can be considered as some sort of an extreme test. That's especially because such a Wraith Prism is not designed for a TDP of 170 watts this 7950X is rated at. I'm all the more excited to give it a go and take a quick look at the clock speeds. For reference, I'm going with the 7950X cooled by a 360mm AIO liquid cooler starting with entirely stock settings. With all 16 cores at full load with the Wraith Prism set at its high RPM mode by the way, we are seeing noticeably lower clock speeds as opposed to the setup with the AIO liquid cooler. That applies to both CCDs of the CPU. The boost clock and the single core test practically is the same though, no wonder. Now once I repeat the same test but instead go with fully identical optimization settings, to my surprise, on the side of the Wraith Prism, I didn't manage to make the CPU run at higher clock speeds, at least not when going for the exact same optimization settings as with the 360mm AIO cooler. So here we are definitely seeing a discrepancy in terms of clock speed behavior. This could have a negative effect on performance. It's just a matter of how much we are losing, considering there's no difference in boost clocks. So if we are lucky, the gaming performance could still remain unaffected for the most part. All is being tested with my usual test system, also applying for AM5. Let's first let the cat out of the bag, the temperatures are not critical whatsoever. The CPU is not waving farewell anytime soon simply because you are putting a subpar cooling solution on top of it. As it's already the case with that 360mm AIO liquid cooler, the 7950X, even with that Wraith Prism, aims for AMD's stock temperature target of 95 degrees Celsius, if we want to call it that way. The idle temperature, on the other hand, already shows certain signs, if I may say so. However, it also needs to be said that you could easily make such a Ryzen 7000 CPU run cooler by simple optimizations and adjustments. That way, I did in fact manage 84 degrees instead of 95 with that measly stock cooler, certainly overwhelmed by a TDP of 170 watts. So we're looking at a win for now, but how about performance? Well, I have some good as well as bad news for you. Under certain productivity workloads, especially those that go on for a rather short amount of time, there's hardly any noteworthy performance loss between the two cooling solutions. Once we put load onto all 16 cores for an extended period of time though, you will have to learn to live with bigger losses. In Cinebench R23 for instance, the 7950X, when cooled by the Wraith Prism, performs nearly 4% worse than when being cooled by a decent AIO. Even the single core performance takes a hit, a 4% hit as well. It's an even bigger drop once we attempt to get temperatures in check by going for optimizations with the Wraith Prism. I mean, it works, 
but it will obviously cost us 5% performance when compared against optimized results with an AIO. Luckily, the single core performance doesn't take any further hit, and so we constantly see slightly lower performance throughout all those different productivity applications. That's where you're simply dependent on strong multi-core performance, and due to lower clock speeds, the CPU will not be able to show its full potential. Those that do lots of rendering, encoding and the like should definitely refrain from this nonsense I'm doing today. And these have already been the bad news. The good ones are that the gaming performance barely even drops, even when cooling the 7950X with such a measly underpowered CPU cooler. I'm not stating there are no differences, but in the majority of cases, those are fully negligible. Now, if I were to showcase the most extreme case, the worst case, it would partially have to be in Far Cry 6, where we see the biggest drop in frame rate. Albeit, we are mostly looking at a drop in 1% lows, and that's by a maximum of 8%. So hardly any surprise that the FPS average of those 11 games tested in total appear really good. Gamers therefore do not need to worry. The next aspect is the power draw. That's where things are getting interesting, but can easily be explained. No matter if we go for stock or optimized settings, paired with the Wraith Prism, the CPU automatically adjusts its power limit accordingly so as to not exceed those 95 degrees Celsius. Cinebench, of course, puts great load onto all cores. The power consumption alone already tells us a lot about the multi-core performance we can expect. An equally as clear picture is painted when glancing over to the power draw while gaming. So that's CPU and GPU combined. We see 593 watts in my case throughout all these configurations, except for that one good and most reasonable optimization. It's obvious the CPU isn't being throttled while gaming, something the gaming results pretty much confirm. Another confirmation are the clock speeds in-game. Well, there are minor discrepancies, but let's call them close to identical. So what exactly is my experiment supposed to tell us? It certainly is impractical and most certainly not realistic. My test more or less simply helps simulate a worst case scenario. Probably close to no one is going to pair such an underpowered CPU cooler with those notoriously toasty Ryzen 7000X variants. Still, the test does show that even in a worst case, we aren't actually losing out on that much performance, and the CPU also doesn't run hotter than with any other decent cooling solution. The CPU will automatically lower its clock speeds accordingly. Even with optimizations, temperatures can actually be reduced, even when using something like a Wraith Prism. So we are certainly not running into any noteworthy risks or dangers here, with such an insane combination. I mean, it's not advisable by any means, but that's obvious. At the end of the day, it'll just cost us multi-core performance, even though these are still losses we could live with, considering how stupid this experiment actually is. With that said, take care and thanks a lot for watching. Until the next one.